when are you exempted not to fast? You have an option. When are you exempted not to fast? I'm not talking about when it's haram to fast. I'm talking about when it's an exemption that, okay, I can fast and I cannot fast. Both are same. Maybe there is a pref preference is difference in terms of school of thought. This is a legitimate excuse. Al-a'dhar al-mubiha lil-fitr fi Ramadan. Oh, ahkam al-muftarina fi Ramadan. Legitimate excuse to break fast. First thing is traveling. Traveling. As-safr. Every scholar of Islam agreed that this is a legitimate reason. If you are a traveler from an Islamic standpoint, then you have an option of leaving the fast or keeping the fast. We'll discuss the disagreement later, inshallah. But now, just FYI, we already discussed this, what we're going to make you a traveler in Islam in the Kitab salah when we are discussing the prayers for the travelers. I won't go that into that entire discussion because I remember that we spent almost one hour in all those all those disagreement, but I'll just give you the summary of that, that who is a traveler in Islam? Who is a traveler in Islam? There are more than a dozens of opinion in this in the, in the, uh, among these scholars. I'll just try to make it simple. So one group of scholars say, the popular opinion is, if you're traveling more than 45 miles, that's also opinion, 48 miles, also that's opinion, 63 miles, 54 miles, bunch of disagreement. If you're traveling more than X number of miles, most of the popular one is actually 48 miles. If you're traveling more than 48 miles, or someone say 80 kilometers, if that is your case, then you are considered as a traveler. That's one group of scholar. And they actually have the evidence from Ibn Abbas عن, that they would say four barid would consider as travel, and barid, four barid is actually equal to almost 48 miles. Second, second opinion. Uh, second opinion is, um, uh, that how your culture defined traveling, that will be a travel. Uh, that will be your travel. Even if you're traveling to 60 miles, but if that's not a travel, travel according to your culture, you are not considered as a traveler. That's the second opinion. That's Ibn Taymi, Ibn Qudama, Ibn Jawzi, um, Imam Uzai, sorry, Imam Uzai, that's their opinion. So basically, if you boil down the entire discussion of the more than dozens of opinion, these two are the most um, uh, famous opinion in our time. So either you can go with 48 miles or you can go how I define traveling in my local culture. If you're traveling from Boston to New York, and if that what you define in your local cult culture traveling, then yes, it will be traveling. Um, either you can go with 48 miles or you can go with the cultural definition. Uh, either way is fine, inshallah. How many days? Uh, yes, you didn't have, inshallah. You can take a picture of it um, and then remove my small picture, which is coming in the corner, inshallah. Um, I can email you again, inshallah, Sister Nana. Um, how many days will make you a traveler? Again, there's a disagreement. We discuss it. 15 days according to Hanafi, four days according to the rest of the majority. Uh, Maliki Shafi says four days. Hamli says more than 21 salah. Hanafi says 15 days. So anything beyond that, you are considered, anything lower than that, you are considered travelers. If I'm traveling to Houston for 14 days, according to Hanafi, I'm a traveler because Hanafi puts the condition of 15 days. If I'm traveling to Houston for three days, according to Shafi, Maliki, Hambali, I'm a traveler. So based on whatever you're following. So again, this is technical detail. Uh, now come back to this, come back to this. You tell me, is it better for a traveler, if he's traveling in Ramadan, to fast or to leave it? Which is better? We know that all these scholars say it's permissible to leave it, but which is, what is better? What is recommended in Islam? To keep the fast? Or to leave the fast. Tell me, which is better? Fast, Allah's gift is best to be taken. Rukhsa, best according to the ayah of the Quran, to keep fast. Okay, mashallah, mashallah. Very, very good. Uh, just like you had disagreement, even our classical scholar have disagreement. Um, and I just want you to tell you that Islam is so rich in the academic knowledge. If you are following one opinion, then it does not mean that other side does not have any knowledge and they are ignorant. No, they all have back and forth evidences. So just take notes. Majority except Hanbali. Yeah, my brother, brother Ibrahim, mashallah, very good. Hanafi, Maliki, Shafi. Hanafi, Maliki, Shafi. They say it's better if you are fasting while traveling because they say the eye of the Quran, when Allah explained fasting, Allah says, Wa an lakum, that if you will fast, it's better for you. Better for you. So Hanafi, Maliki, Shafi, majority say it's better for you to fast. 
but they have one condition. Even they say it's better for you to fast in traveling, but they have one condition. The condition is if there is no hardship. If traveling involves hardship, then even according to them, it's haram. It's wajib not to fast, even according to them, if there is a hardship in that travel. Is it clear? It's very important for us to know, subhanAllah. I gave you their evidence. Now, let's discuss Hanbali Mazhab. Hanbali Mazhab is on the other end. Hanbali Mazhab say it's makru, dislike. If you are a traveler and you are fasting, even if there is no hardship, if you are fasting, it's makru. It's dislike. And it's preferable to leave fast because of uh, the reasons which I will going to give you right now. So this is extremely important for us to know. Al-Marbawi, famous, 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 Sahib al-Insaf, famous Sahambali scholar, he says, وَيُكْرَهُ صَوْمَهُ وَلَوْ لَمْ يَجِدْ مَشَقَّةً That it's considered as just like makru, even if there is no hardship in Hanbali Mazhab. Now, how Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal can go against the majority, and then majority have the evidence, even he, he have the evidence, and try to see. And that's why, subhanAllah, to say, oh, I follow Quran and Sunnah. I follow Quran and Sunnah. Well, all of them are following Quran and Sunnah. Now, let, let, let's, see, let, let's see their evidence. Two of the prime evidence which the Hanbali uses, first evidence, is in Sahih Muslim, at the time of Fath Makkah, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu broke his fast. While other companions were looking at him, that what he was going to do. So some companions broke his fast by looking at the Prophet that he broke his fast. The other group of companions that didn't break their fast. When Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu came to know about those group of companions, he said in Sahih Muslim, They are disobedient people. Means why you want to not break your fast? Why you want to have this hardship? This is the evidence which Hanbali Mazhab uses, one of the many evidence that it's not preferable to fast while you're traveling. Counter argument. Why majority, majority Hanafi, Shafi, Maliki, they didn't know about this hadith? No, they knew this hadith. The counter argument is that majority says that this traveling in Fatih Makkah was for fighting for battlefield and they need to preserve their energy. And that's where everyone agrees that you don't need to fast. So this example cannot be used to say it's makru in general circumstances. That's the majority argument. Second evidence according to Hanbali Mazhab that if you are traveling, it will be considered as uh, makru, even if there is no hardship. Uh, it, this is mentioned in Bukhari that a Sahaba felt unconscious while they were traveling with Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and people came to inform Rasulullah sallam that this person was fasting, and he could not bear; he felt unconscious. And Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Laysa min al sawmu fis safar," that it is on righteousness to fast while you are traveling. Hadith in Bukhari. Um, now you might say, oh, see, they have the Hamblis have the Hadith. Hanafi, Maliki, Shafi, they don't have the Hadith. No, they have the counter argument. The counter argument, Hanafi, Maliki, Shafi say that this Hadith is talking about the hardship that the person felt unconscious. Even we agree that when you are hardship, it's haram for you to fast. But generally, if you have are having luxurious traveling experience in, uh, in plane and nothing to worry about, then it's better to fast. So that's their back and forth argument. Um, but I would say go with the majority because there is a, another hadith in Bukhari that we went out with Rasulullah Sallallahu Sahaba says on a hot day in a, in a journey, in a travel and none of us was fasting while Rasulullah was fasting, subhanAllah. This hadith is mentioned in Bukhari also. Uh, so go with the majority but there is an opinion in the Hanbali Mazhab uh, so don't argue, don't argue. That's, that's, that's the key, subhanAllah. Conditions of traveling in terms of fasting. Um, majority except Hanbali. Majority accept humbly. Listen to this. They say the travel which will going to make you an, as an exemption not to fast, that travel have to start before Fajr. If you are traveling after Salatul Fajr, then you are not exempted to leave that fast until it is extreme necessity that you are dying, then you can break your fast. But the travel have to start before Salatul Fajr according to majority accept humbly. Is it clear? That's Hanafi, that's Shafi, that Maliki. The travel have to start before Fajr and you have to leave. And they say that you have to leave the area so much so that you are considered as a traveler or at least leave your city before Fajr. And you can only break your fast in the case of dire necessity after that, if you're leaving after Salatul Fajr. Um, and they have the actually hadith for supporting this that you don't have to 
um, uh, break your fast after or you leave, uh, uh, you leave after Salat al-Fajr. Unless there is an extreme necessity that you're dying of starving and thirst, then you can break your fast. Uh, and majority actually uses one evidence from some Sahih Muslim uh, that Prophet traveled in the year of Fatih Makkah, same hadith, towards Makkah. When he reached at the suburbs of Medina, Qura al um, Prophet was told that some people is having difficulty and hardship in their fasting, subhanAllah. He was traveling towards Fatih Makkah. And he was, uh, he was told that in the nasa qad shakka alayhim al-siyam, that some people are having difficulty in their fasting. Then Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, after Salat al-Asr, after Salat al-Asr, he says, and people were looking at Prophet, what he would do. Now we already told that some people are struggling with their fast while you are traveling. He asked for water and he drank in front of everyone to show that I broke my fast. So some people followed him, some people didn't. And that's where he told, these people are disobedient. This is the evidence used by majority that you don't have to break your fast until, unless there is a extreme necessity. Again, we are discussing about the conditions of travel. Majority says your travel have to start before Fajr. And you cannot break after Fajr unless there is an extreme necessity. Humbly, on the other hand, they are very light in this. They say it's okay if you travel after Fajr. It's okay if you travel after Zohar, after Zawal. You can break your fast anytime because you are not a traveler. Uh, and they have hadith also. They have hadith in Abu Dawud. Uh, one of the Sahaba, Abi Basr al Ghaffari, he says, Allah ziyaf taraba ala shuruhi fi safr, qala inha sunnat Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that he broke his fast um, after he left after Fajr uh, for a journey, and he says, This is a sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is mentioned in Abu Dawud. So, does missing Fajr prayer affect the fasting? <laughs> No, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, a huge sin, but it doesn't invalidate your fasting. We'll discuss this about in invalidators. There's a complete chapter about invalidators, which will come in third or fourth session, inshallah. Um, but don't break before Zohar if you intend to travel before Zohar night. Uh, but don't break before Zohar if you intend to travel before Zohar night. Uh, I didn't understand, Brother Nehat. Can you ask me again? Okay. Quick question. Quick question now. If you are working as an Uber driver, or let's say if your job is 60 miles, you're going in the morning, coming back, and you are following one of those opinions that after 48 miles or 50 miles, I'm considered a traveler. Do you break your fast? Or you would say, no, no, this is I'm doing every day for work, even though technically from Sharia perspective, I'm a traveler, but I'm not. You would keep the fast. Tell me, what, what should you do? If you're working as an Uber driver. Okay, Brother Smile says, yes, we should keep it. Uh, Brother Kamal said, yes, you keep it. Keep the fast. But is it mandatory or is it recommended? Okay. Here, only Shah Faiz have put the extra caution and he says, traveling for your work-related purpose every single day like Uber driver, it's haram for you to break the fast. You should keep it. Majority say you have an option. You have an option. You can do whatever you want and we'll go back to the same principle of the school of thought. That's better, not better. Um, Let's start now. Um, okay. After all this, by the way, just remember one hadith as a rule of thumb. Just remember this one hadith after all this discussion of the traveler. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said in Bukhari, actually no, Sahaba says, سَافَرْنَا مَعَا رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ فِي رَمَضَانْ فَسَامَ بَعْدُنَا وَأَفْتَرَ بَعْدُنَا فَلَمْ يَعِبِ الصَّائِمْ عَلَى الْمُفْتِرْ وَلَى الْمُفْتِرْ عَلَى الصَّائِ Few of us fasted while others didn't, while we were traveling with Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. says, we were fasting while traveling with Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and others were not fasting while they were traveling with us. Neither of us blame each other. This should be our attitude. If you disagree on something, that's okay. But they both are falling in evidence. Do not say, I am right, you are wrong, because that's what we don't need, especially in these times, subhanAllah. 